Hey folks, this is Kalani. With patch 8.2 finally arriving next week, we only have a very short period of time to get all of our ducks in a row. Assuming, of course, that you like rows of ducks. One major feature that I know a lot of people are excited about is the professions update. Pretty much every profession will be getting something new to craft or use, and most importantly we'll have all new raw materials to collect down in Nazjatar to fuel these new crafting recipes. So with professions being a pretty big part of patch 8.2, it's important that you go into the patch as prepared as possible, and ideally with the professions you're going to want to make use of right away. It's no good deciding you want to change to enchanting after the patch goes live if you're wanting to get some of that early gold selling the new enchants. You have to be quick, which means being max in your desired prof when Tuesday rolls around. But what professions are going to do well in patch 8.2? Does anything stick out in particular? Well, let's have a look at how each profession will be changing in patch 8.2, and I'll give you my thoughts and opinions as we go. Let's start with the gathering professions. Gathering itself hasn't really changed significantly with how it's going to work. You know, you gather items, there's not really much to talk about, but you will have a new raw material no matter what profession you're rolling with. Herbalists will be gathering Xenanthid, Miners will be gathering Osmanite Ore, and Skinners can obtain Dredged Leather and Crag Scales. So everyone will be gathering new stuff, which means new skills in your profession window. Every profession, gathering and crafting alike, will also have a new max level of 175. That's an extra 25 profession levels we can collect, which will unlock higher ranks of the new gathering skills. Another advantage to being 150 before the patch goes live. Unlike in Legion, when they did a mini profession update, this time everything will be used by the appropriate crafting professions in large quantities. Hopefully that will translate into these materials staying valuable for more than a few weeks, which could prove to be quite lucrative if you decided to go back to the double gathering route. If you have to pick a single gathering profession, I would stick with Herbalism. While every new raw material is going to get used, the ores go to dual crafters and blacksmiths the most. Gems typically start off expensive and then free fall because the number of sockets we have access to is way lower than the number of gems available on the auction house. Blacksmithing and engineering will use the ore too, but not in the same quantities that herbalism and inscription will use the herbs. As a quick note, skinning typically isn't profitable for too long because the only real profession that uses the raw materials is leatherworking, so you run into the same issue of supply and demand. With new potions, flasks, and cauldrons coming in April Point two, all of the Zin and Thid will be sucked up very rapidly, maintaining a high gold price, so the best gathering profession is most likely going to be Herbalism. But depending on whether or not you want a crafting profession to go alongside your gathering profession, your needs could vary. Let's have a look at what crafting professions we'll be getting. Now part of me doesn't want to do this alphabetically because that puts alchemy first. I'm not sure whether that's a good idea or not, because honestly, alchemy might eclipse every other profession for patch 8.2. There's new potions, new flasks, and new cauldrons being introduced, which are a bit better than their potions we've been running around since the start of Battle for Azeroth. Battle potions of primary stat give 900 of your chosen stat for 25 seconds right now, while the new patch 8.2 greater battle potions will provide 1,215 of your stat for 25 seconds. Quite a sizable increase. So much so that the majority of raiders will be buying up these new potions whenever they can get their hands on them, and only settling for the old pots if they're either out of gold or there's no new potions available. The flasks are in a similar position. Our current flasks give us 238 primary stat, the new greater flasks provide 360 primary stat. If this increase wasn't quite as large as it is, people might not want to fork over a significant amount of gold just for a few intellect or agility, but with the new potions and flasks being significantly better, you can be sure they'll fly off the shelf. There's also some new potions, ones which focus on single target and ones which focus on AoE damage. Both of these potions will likely be very valuable to Mythic Plus dungeon runners, so there's another potion you get to sell. All of this stuff uses the new herb as well as some of the old herbs, so herbing in general is going to be quite a profitable profession just by itself. If you can get some of the rank 3 recipes to start procking the free flasks or potions in this new patch 8.2, you could be churning out some serious gold in the first few weeks of Season 3 of Battle for Azeroth. But starting from scratch in 8.2 isn't going to cut it. 
the very least you'll have to be maxed alchemy going into the patch to stand a chance at taking your slice of the pie. So yeah, maybe alchemy and herbing have already secured their spot as the best professions for patch 8.2, but maybe you don't want to swap because you have some old recipes in your book, or you just enjoy blacksmithing or enchanting or whichever profession you want to continue your adventures with. That's perfectly fine, and as I said, every profession is getting something new, so let's continue. Blacksmithing will get a new round of PvP crafted gear, which is item level 370. That's just below the benthic gear being offered up in Nazjatar, so this new crafted gear will most likely be the first step a lot of alts take to start gearing up so they can take on the monsters in the two new zones of Nazjatar and Mechagon. It's a bit low when compared to the raiding gear, but honestly, the PvP crafted gear hasn't really been competitive at all in Battle for Azeroth. You might still be able to make some good gold from people wanting to gear up alts, or players hitting max level for the first time. There is a new set of raiding crafted gear too. The Osmanite ore can be crafted at 410, 425 and 440 item level. That's five item levels below the raiding difficulties as per usual. And an interesting little addition for blacksmithing is the inflatable mount shoes. These are a part of the new mount equipment system, so blacksmiths will be able to craft the water walking equipment, which allows any of your mounts to walk on water while you have the equipment, well, equipped. Enchanting is up next, and honestly, if you're not too bothered about going alchemy, then enchanting would be a good runner-up, especially if your focus is on gold making. There's new ring enchants for every secondary stat, which provides 60 of your chosen stat, up from the 37 we have right now as a maximum. Again, a sizable increase there, so a lot of raiders are going to want these better enchants for every piece of gear they get, or at least every new ring they get. There's also some new weapon enchants, which might prove to be useful for a variety of classes or spells. Specs. There's one which increases intellect and gives you a mana regen buff, one which increases intellect and secondary stats while you're in combat, another one which does the same thing but for agility and strength, and then a very similar one for agility and strength, but this one has a chance to provide you with an absorbed shield. Very useful for all the tanks out there. Enchanters also get a piece of the mount equipment pie. They'll be able to craft the light step hoof plates, which increase your mounted movement speed by 20%. So a nice little extra there at the end. With some new weapon enchants, which look to be quite powerful, and the upgrade to the ring enchants, you should be able to make a pretty penny with enchanting in patch 8.2. Engineering is in an interesting place, because if you enjoy what you're doing right now, you should be golden. If you're wanting a whole bunch of extra cool things, well... I mean, you get one or two. There's a new Blinktron 7000, which is pretty exciting, but you don't technically have to be an engineer to make use of those, providing there's enough engineers just plopping them down in the major areas. There's a new wormhole generator for Kulturas and Zandalar, but we won't be in those zones as often, with Nazjatar and Mechagon on the table. There are some new modules for the Uber Spanner 2, but none of them seem particularly exciting. The good news is that you get a new set of goggles at 415, 430, and 445 item level to go along with a new raid, so if those goggles have some good traits for you, then you can still benefit from your super goggles. Apart from that, engineering is a bit lackluster right now. Inscription is another case of if you're enjoying it already, then 8.2 should be good to you. There's a new Vantus rune, a new contract for the three new factions that will be farming rep with, a handful of new glyphs, and some new trinkets. The trinkets start at item level 400, so I think this is kind of a replacement for the Dark Moon card trinkets. I don't think you can upgrade these at all, so that means they will probably serve as another source of easy gear to help gear alts up, or new players coming back into the patch. All in all, its potential isn't all too great, but it will help keep the herb and pot prices decently high by soaking up more herbs in the market. On to jewel crafting, we have a whole new round of gems, including epic gems for secondary stats. Those will provide 60 of a given stat, up from 40 for the rare ones we have right now, so they're going to be a pretty decent moneymaker to start with. There's also a new primary stat gem, the kind that you can only use one of at a time, which will provide 120 of your primary stat, up from the 80 that we have right now, so they should fetch you a decent price too. The main problem is that we aren't ever guaranteed gem sockets on any loot these days. You might find a ring or trinket that always has a socket, but that's incredibly rare outside of crafted gear, so there's a problem of demand with gems most of the time, which drives their prices down quite quickly. If you hop on jewel crafting early, you could make some good money, but nothing compared to herbing and alchemy. 
Leatherworkers are in the same boat as blacksmithing. New crafty PvP gear might make you some steady gold as people try to gear up their alts. This new raiding crafted gear, which you can make use of if the pieces are any good for you. And the only other interesting thing they have is the comfortable rider's barding, which is now a piece of mount equipment. This one prevents you from being dazed while you're mounted, so that might end up being the other major player here alongside water walking. Not getting dazed is pretty useful, if for nothing else but to remove the pure rage and frustration that ensues every single time you get dazed on a mount. I swear, there's nothing worse in this game than getting dazed. So for the same reasons as blacksmithing, I doubt leatherworking will have much going for it. Unsurprisingly, tailoring joins that club as well. New PvP crafted gear at item level 370 for the ults and gearing and all that good stuff. New crafted raid gear at 410, 425 and 440 item levels if you want to use the bind on pickup crafted stuff. And then tailors will be producing the saddle chute, which deploys a slow fall parachute if you get dismounted at a high altitude. Probably one of the least interesting pieces of mount equipment, and with nothing else being altogether too special for tailors, I doubt they will see much hype in patch 8.2 either. So if you're looking for a great profession combo that can save you gold, make you gold, or just be incredibly useful for your own personal goals, Herbalism and Alchemy are still top contenders here in Battle for Azeroth and patch 8.2. You can make gold by selling your spare herbs or by selling your potions and flasks, you can save gold by producing your own raid consumables and getting the extra time on your flask, and let's be honest, being self-sufficient with this kind of thing is more about just the gold you're saving, it's also incredibly satisfying. I'm going to swap around a few of my professions to make sure the characters that I play the most will have herbalism so I can pump all of my herbs into one alchemist and make as many flasks and potions at rank 3 as soon as possible. Hopefully I'll make a good chunk of gold, but even if I don't I'll be happy knowing I won't have to rely on the auction house for my raid consumables for most of patch 8.2. I might actually start pre-potting again, imagine that. But that's it for this video. What do you think of the profession changes going into patch 8.2? Will you be changing your professions for the patch next week, or are you happy with what you have so far? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time. Time.